Hello, this is Angela with Parker's Permaculture. Welcome back to House Frau Friday. This is a regular weekly segment where I talk about the overlap of domestic skills and philosophy, parenting, everything with the home in mind, and permaculture ethics and principles. So it seems really laid out. I think it's probably about 5.30. I'm gonna head home soon for dinner. I have spent the whole day running around I um, had to visit a relative in the hospital. Uh, I have been every single day for long periods of time. And then I have to visit my dad who's at a rehab facility right now. Uh, and it's just, it's a lot of caregiving and a lot of um, driving to and from and a lot of sitting by sick beds and, um, you know, trying to comfort folks. I make a point when I go and visit my dad, either when he's in independent living or where he's at right now, or when I go and visit folks um, in the hospital, I make a point of always trying to dress kind of nice, not like showy nice, but I try and put on good clothes and and show them that I care, that I've made an effort for them. And I find that in independent living, all of the lovely little old ladies compliment all my clothes and want to talk about them. And I get such a kick out of it and I hope that they do too. Whether it's like wearing a cameo or today I have on this skirt that I made, I'll show you in a second. This is the Pendleton wool that I recently bought. I just try and look a little bit nice because that's the way I feel like I can show other people that I'm, I care about them. I realized today as I was driving to the hospital that everything I am wearing except this blouse, which is just a thrifted linen blouse, I think it's J. Jill, I made myself, including the undergarments that I have under my skirt and including the socks that I have on that I knitted. So I thought really quickly, let's talk about six reasons why I love making my own clothes and wearing them out and about. Besides the fact that it gives the little old ladies at my dad's nursing home a big kick, which is a great added benefit. The first reason that I like to make my own clothes is that it is cheaper. Those of you that sew are probably laughing at me, especially those of you who are also history bounders, but let me, let me just, let me stand up here. This skirt that I'm wearing, you can see the pockets here. This is thrifted material I bought many years ago. And the hem facing is the same material. This wool skirt that I sewed 100% by hand is made from Pendleton wool that I got. And you can check it out in a recent video. And I spent $24 total on the wool. Oh, 20, excuse me, $24 total on the wool and the tarlatan that is inside the hem facing, which is a stiffener that's underneath this layer that helps the hem of the skirt kind of flare out a little bit. And there's tons of other wool left over. I'm gonna make myself a 1890s um, waistcoat that matches, and I'm probably gonna make the girls each either a skirt or maybe some vests or things out of it. Might make my 14 year old a vest actually, he really likes vests. So when I say $24 for the whole thing, that's because I bought the fabric as seconds. Normally this fabric would be like 40 or $60 a yard. And I got it very cheaply because I was willing to buy seconds and to cut around a few small holes in the fabric. It's $24, but I will probably wear this skirt for two decades or more. I have skirts that I sewed when I was in my early 20s. I'm now in my early 40s and I still wear them. So when we're looking at the cost per year, this skirt probably is gonna cost me, you know, like one or $2 a year uh, by the time I'm done wearing it. Very cost effective. And at the end, it's 100% natural fibers and it can just be composted. So it is cheaper in the long run for me to make my own clothes. And not only because I wear them for a really long time, but also because I source the material cheaply. So like I said, seconds, mill ends, is one way I get my fabric. The predominant way I get my fabric is from the thrift store. Curtains. Um, this was part of a uh, men's wool blazer that I cut up and made into a vest. It was a lovely wool check. Mm, it's not really like a check. It's just a, a wool weave. And the sleeves were real ratty and I thought nobody's going to use this. It's $3.99 and I can take all of the wool and I can make myself a nice little waistcoat with it and it can have another life. So thrifted, either clothes or fabric like curtains and sheets or mill ends and seconds are how I make most of my clothes. So for me, it is really cost effective and more environmentally friendly because I'm using something that otherwise would be a waste product. So number one, more cost effective. Number two, as I hinted at, more ecologically sensible. 
When you have a smaller wardrobe and you wear your clothes for a long period of time, you're reducing your ecological footprint significantly. I'm not buying things from Shein and throwing them out after three months and they're going right into the landfill. I'm wearing clothes for a decade or more. Well-made, handmade clothes last a long time. And I choose timeless silhouettes. This is a Victorian walking skirt pattern from Truly Victorian. I will link it down below. Very easy for an intermediate sewer, maybe even like an advanced beginner. It's very, very easy pattern. And I've used this pattern many times. So investing in the pattern, I have made several skirts out of it for myself and for others as gifts. I make a point of using all natural materials whenever I can. So this was 100% wool. The skirt is 100% wool. The cotton is thrifted. This was actually a Indonesian skirt, I believe, that was thrifted and had some holes in it. And that is 100% cotton. And the tarlatan is cotton that has been starched. So all of this can go back to the earth and be composted at the end. The third reason that I really love to make my own clothes is that they fit me better. I'm tall, I have big hips, I have a small bust. It's very hard for me to find, oh, and I have broad shoulders. It's very hard for me to find clothes that fit me well if I don't know how to tailor existing thrifted clothes or if I don't know how to make my own clothes. I feel more comfortable going about my day when a garment fits me well. And to second that point, I'm obviously not the same size I was when I was 23. I know how to alter clothes so that they last longer and continue to fit me really well. And I sew into them um, a, a, a buffer in the waistband. So there's extra folded over fabric in the waistband. I'll show you a picture so that I can let the waist out later or I could unpick the waist and take it in if I get smaller in the future. All right, I'm not sure where the footage went for this, but number four is it's a portable activity. It's something I can take with me and work on when I'm waiting for my kids to get out of a class, when I'm in a doctor's appointment waiting room while a relative is going in to get a treatment or see their care provider. It's something where I know I can keep busy and work on a meaningful task during those times that would otherwise feel like wasted time. Number five is it gives me an outlet for my creative expression. I've talked about this in the past. Just because we're homemakers, our whole life is not cleaning and changing diapers. We are creative beings and we need to create. And so many people around the world throughout history have expressed themselves through the garments that they put on their body. When you make your own clothes, all of that creative expression in your dress comes from you. You get the say in, in what you look like. And for me, I really enjoy that. I enjoy the process of, of making the clothing and the process of, of deciding what patterns I'm going to pick out. And not only that, it feels like a treasure hunt a little bit because I have an idea in my head and then I have to go and hunt at the thrift store to find something that's close enough that I can use it for my project. And sometimes it's that I have a piece of material and I have to reverse engineer. Well, like, now what can I make out of this material that I will wear and enjoy and use for a long time? How can I make use of what I have in my stash? I really like history bounding clothes. Since my teenage years, I have enjoyed wearing long skirts. I've always worn very long skirts. Part of that is because it's hard for me to find pants that are long enough. I love long skirts. I love the freedom that they give. I often wear them hiking. I often wear them doing yard work. It doesn't mean I don't like pants. I love overalls as well. But I love that I can choose the style that I want. I can tweak it how I want. And I often pick something timeless. A lot of people that are very history bounding, have a video on that, are very much that way. They feel more comfortable in clothes of another generation, of a bygone era. But those clothes are also somehow timeless and not subjected to the very rapid fashion trends that we have now. I could dress up in a 1950s style outfit and I will look cute and I will enjoy it. I can dress in an 1890s meets, you know, um, 1990s outfit and I can feel comfortable in it. I don't have to subscribe to the current fashion trends and that's another way I can help have the creativity come from me and not from what our current culture is dictating is, is fashionable. I can have my own unique sense of fashion. And that leads me to my last point. The sixth reason that I love to make my own clothes is because they are something that challenges me. I need hobbies that challenge me. For many of us that are homemakers, there's a, a level of drudgery in our real lives that is just there. It's something that we have to deal with. Every vocation has drudgery. For me, I am challenged by trying more complicated patterns, by trying garments I've never made before, by trying to tailor something for a friend or alter it for a friend. Being able to sew my own clothes and sew for others is 
something that is mentally stimulating and that's important as we get older. As somebody caring for elderly relatives right now, as somebody looking at myself and my own aging process and being keenly aware of it, having tasks that challenge me, the visual geometry, the three dimensionality of garments makes them a math puzzle, makes them not only an artistic project, but it makes them an engineering project at the same time. And I find that fascinating and challenging. And the more advanced my sewing gets, the more I find myself reaching for those projects that I'm not quite sure if I can tackle them or not, but I sure wanna try it. I sure wanna push myself. It's something that in the midst of, you know, cleaning kitchen counters and making the same loaf of bread every morning, I have something in the background like, oh, when I have a few minutes to sit down, I'm working on this blue linen skirt for myself right now that has a unique closure and a unique um, yoke that I've never made before. And I'm really excited about doing that. So if you're thinking about making your own clothes, I have some good resources down below to some easy patterns. I hope you will dive into it a little bit. There's so many ways that making your own clothes can benefit you whether you're a homemaker or not. Can benefit you in terms of your comfort level, can benefit the planet in terms of doing all of those small things to reduce your footprint. And also be something that is an outlet for your creative expression and mentally and physically stimulating for you as you get older. Thank you for watching House Frau Friday today. I have a bonus video coming out that will either be out tonight or tomorrow morning because as I'm here in this house with um, all of my mother's things, I'm thinking about material possessions and what they mean for me and what place I wanna have for them in my life. So I hope you will tune into that video, which will be out very shortly. And then I'll be back for my permaculture garden later in the weekend. Thanks.